Thank you so much for tuning into the Duchess of Success podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and comment on the video to help the algorithm find us. It is my pleasure to bring you all of the royal tea, honey. And if you would like to donate to the channel, please check out the links in the description box. All of your donations help to keep the channel running. Thank you for your support. And remember, you don't need a crown to be royal. We are all queens. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Friday, everyone. And what an amazing treat we have to end the week. Wow. I was just about to go to bed down under here where I am. And I don't know, I just, I couldn't tear away from my phone. And you all know I've been like suffering with insomnia probably for like over a year now. So I'm trying to be more careful with not having, you know, the phone next to my face before I go to bed. But I just couldn't stop tinkering with my phone and I feel like it's because my squatty senses were going off and lo and behold I'm going through Twitter and I I see this very fancy looking uh writing and branding and I'm like what is this and somebody had written in a tweet this is not a drill Megan has a brand out and I'm like wait what what is going on and then I went to the page for the brand and I couldn't see anything uh, at first. And the page loaded. And then it said Megan Duchess of Sussex. And then, so at this point, I'm like, hmm, is somebody just playing around? 
And then I clicked on the story. I clicked on the story and the audio and video started playing and just giving off hints of Megan in the kitchen, Megan wearing a gown, a beautiful gown and what appears to be I think maybe the cellars in the Montecito castle. And I, I think also the song that plays, I'm not going to play it now just in case it creates any copyright issues, but I think it's something, something about like wishing you well or something like that. I think of a very um, deliberately chosen song. And one of the most interesting things about this dropping today is it was, what are we, four years out now from when Harry and Meghan took that infamous freedom flight. And they've got to have been working on this for months. And I did wonder, um, you know, will Megan relaunch anything like the TIG? Because they're working on, you know, a production company, Archwell Audio, other investments, Archwell, you know, all the stuff that they've got going on with the philanthropy. Would they have time and energy to put one more project in? And then I forgot, this is Megan. How many projects did she do in the span of two years? that she was a working royal. And here we have American Riviera, Riviera Orchid. Montecito, 2024. So we're going to get into all of that today. My goodness. Just wow, wow, wow. I am so glad that... Um, we get to experience this because I never got to live the TIG era and I was always so jealous of everyone that actually got to follow and know Megan during that time. Right, before we do get into it, proper proper into it, um, I have now started a new TikTok. It's the Duchess of Success. I think my old, my old one was Duchess of Success official, something like that. For, for whatever reason, I, I just cannot get access to that account. So I've started a new TikTok called The Duchess of Success. And it has this um, avatar on it. I think my old one has my old logo on it. So if you'd like to go follow me on TikTok, I'm going to start posting on there more. If you're on TikTok, um, yeah, please do give us a follow. Right. On to Megan's brand. Now, I don't know exactly how the squad... Uh, the squad found it. I'm going to assume maybe it's because Megan's friends started following it. So this, th it has been um, given a blue tick. Megan's friends are following it, and one of them actually posted about it in her story. So this is 100%. This is definitely her. And it took me a hot minute to realize, but the writing on the logo, the calligraphy, I am almost 100% sure that is Megan's handwriting because she, of course, does calligraphy. Let's just have a quick look at that. Here we go. Always adding her own little personal touches. Now, please do forgive me. I, I was listening. I started listening to Baron's podcast, but I didn't have any time. And he had started to explain what American Riviera Orchid actually means and stands for. So if there's any Americans in the chat that can just update me on that. I started to listen and then I unfortunately had to stop because I needed to finish something. But if you could explain to me what that means, I would uh, so much uh, appreciate that. But the, the thing that struck me about the logo is the, the intricate way in which the letters are done. So you, you can see the A and the R, but it also almost kind of looks like a H and an A. Um, sorry, a, a H and an M. And it's just so beautifully done. And it, it is giving royal in its own unique kind of way. And these are some of the stills from the video. You see Megan cooking, the flowers, and going through the hallway in what looks like some kind of ball gown. And I'm, I'm that I think that looks like the the brickwork in their wine cellar. And the account 
is nearing almost 300,000. This is when I first went uh, to check and her friend had posted it in her stories. So it's uh, nearing almost 300,000. It's been growing. Like I, I looked at it at one point and then I refreshed the page like five minutes later and it grew by like 10,000 in like five minutes. It's insane. So we're, at we're actually at 290,000 right now. I think we'll likely be at 300,000, maybe 400,000 plus by the, the end of today. And I think in the next seven days, we'll hit a million for, for sure. I think once you hit a million, like that is, we're going towards billion dollar brand status. And what is Megan going to be giving us? Well, maybe we have a clue. With the trademarks, here we have online non downloadable ebooks in the field of cookbooks and recipe books, downloadable cookbooks and recipe books, tab tableware, namely knives, forks, and spoons, table cutlery, jellies, jams, marmalades, fruit preservatives. I can't remember which interview it was. It was either, was it the cut or variety where Megan said that she made jams? Or she gave Archie jams and stuff to take to school and like a baskets of fruit? Vegetable based spreads, nut based spreads, garlic based spreads, sesame based spreads, dairy based spreads, nut butters, fruit butters, printed cookbooks and recipe books, Tape, uh, textile tablecloths, textile placemats, table linen. Gift wrap, retail store services, including foods, books, tablewares, and tablescape goods, table liners, and servingware, online retail store services featuring food. I am here for all of it. I will be buying all of the things. And this is so in line with what Megan did during her, during her tick era. This is just a uh, updated version of that. Ah, Tamiko, Santa Barbara is known as the American Riviera for a century. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me know. And the, the branding is, it is so on brand. It's so Megan. And the site, um, which, by the way, you can go to and you can sign up to their newsletter. It's done by Article, who they've been working with for some time. And Article is a female-owned uh, design company. and on it like whatever whatever is on it phew, i am excited to buy and megan she's always been about cooking not just on her tig blog but i think she did some uh features on the today show and abc um doing cooking it's always been her thing the together cookbook and also this uh, new thing that they have going on with art trial helping women in afghanistan I mean, this is so on brand for her. And I, I hope we see more than just this. I want a clothing line. <laughs> I want to make a clothing line. I want to make an everything. Um, but of course, we've had capillaries popping, blood pressure going up, tantrums being thrown, and the Daily Fail somehow managing to identify almost every single item in a blurry picture but they have little to say about their taxpayer funded princess who's not been seen for nearly 80 days incredible i mean why are you labeling metal fruit stand and plates this is ridiculous this is next level obsession and it was on the front page of the daily fail they are her biggest fans and do you know what it is? What I think it is. I was just, um, or part of what I think it is. I was just in a, a spaces, a squatty spaces, and there was an Irish lady, and she was um, talking about, you know, her perspective on all of this. And one of the things that she mentioned, and I think is um, overlooked, is the classism and elitism of this all. And yes, race is a big part of it. And there have been there has been specific discrimination because of Megan's race. But even if Megan was not biracial with a black mother, even if she was Caucasian, the elitism and the classism would still be there. And it's just this idea of what we are should be the standard. And so now that they've had a mirror held up to them, 
and someone who challenged that, they don't like it. But their bar was so low. How low, you ask? When Megan did 40 times 40 and we got a first look at her office, they were saying things like, how was anybody's house that clean? Now, obviously, Harry and Meghan live in a mansion, but if you actually look at their office, it's very simple, clean, minimalist design. Like, even if you live in a small house and you wanted to recreate that, you could do that. What, you can't do some basic interior design and clean your house? That's, that's like, just so out of your reach and amazing to you. Baby, your bar is low. Uplift yourself. Hating on somebody else is not going to fix your life. Anywho, don't want to get too much into the negativity. I'm very much looking forward to this, whatever it is. Uh, it seems like it is going to be some kind of lifestyle brand. Um, with a website. Um, hopefully, we may be able to shop from it. Hopefully, if there are you know products, we'll be able to buy them in the store. And nobody can say that uh, nobody can say anything about this because the royals do commercial ventures also whether it's selling their baby pictures selling ketchup selling perfume selling gin so megan can do what she likes and all of these catty royal rotor rats who are saying oh why is megan doing this when kate is ill and charles is ill the, the woman doesn't have to center her whole life over what's going on with her relatives who live thousands of miles away. Especially when some of those other relatives, they don't look too sad about what's happening with Charles and Kate. William is partying with Tom Cruise. Pippa's on holiday. They were off at the races in Bahrain for the F1. And they were at some fancy hat event over here, wearing trench coats. But Megan is meant to have her whole life revolving around what's going on here. Leave the woman alone. She left. Got on that freedom flight four years ago. And here we are four years later. Launching what looks like it's going to be an incredible lifestyle brand. In other good news. Archer Foundation has revealed its selection for the Digital Civil Rights Award. Which they give out every year. Um, they gave one to Sophia Noble, who wrote Algorithms of Oppression. And I forget who they gave their other one to, but I think this is their third one that they've given out. And so let's read about this. I'm not going to play the video because, again, I don't know about copyright. But the Archer Foundation is proud to congratulate this year's recipient of the NAACP um, Archer Foundation Digital Civil Rights Award, Dr. Joy Bulua, um Winnie. Dr. Joy is a computer scientist, digital activist, and founder of the Algorithmic Justice League, an organization leading the way to overcome RS and S bias in artificial intelligence systems. So if you actually watch the video, and I posted it on my Instagram page, one of the cool things um, about her work was that she realized that certain uh, facial recognition didn't recognize like black faces. So truly incredible work. In her book, Unmasking AI, she examines the social implications of technology and discusses the movement to prevent AI harms. As a recipient of this award, she will receive a grant of over $100,000 to advance her work in supporting equity and accountability in AI. Fantastic. Launched in 2022, this annual award uplifts a new generation of leaders who are creating transformational change and working to advance civil rights through the online world. Indeed, we don't want no one putting fake images out there and trying to create a narrative that doesn't exist. We can't have anyone using AI and Photoshop to lie. And I just wanted to um, make note of what Mr. Pete Souza said. So this is Obama's photographer. And he posted this. Uh, give me one sec, folks. It's not showing up for me on the screen. Okay. I made this photograph of Prince George meeting President Obama in 2016. The digital file was processed with Photoshop, a software 
program made by Adobe that virtually every professional photographer uses. Yet my photograph was certainly not altered or changed in content. I thought of this distinction after the photograph released earlier this week of Princess Catherine and her children was found to be altered. Some stories referred to it as being photoshopped and that made me cringe. Every publication like the New York Times and every news organisation like the Associated Press have strict policies on using Photoshop to process images. Basically, accepted practices allow a news photograph to be tweaked by adjusting the colour balance, the density, make the raw file lighter and darker, and shadows and highlights. What's not acceptable is to remove, add or change elements in the photograph that would be altering the content. For example, if there was a telephone pole sticking out of a person's head, you wouldn't be allowed to remove it. Or if someone mashes multiple family pictures together into one, that wouldn't be acceptable. Why though did Associated Press, so why though did it take Associated Press nearly two hours to make this determination with the photo earlier this week? Also, I do wonder if the first um, uh, news outlet, if, if Associated Press hadn't done that, would the others? Because it was the others that followed. Let's keep this in mind, given the current political climate where a certain presidential candidate and his rabid supporters dismiss stories he or they don't like as fake news. He has also said multiple times that published photographs of himself he didn't uh, like were photoshopped. The photographs in question undoubtedly were processed through Photoshop, but not at all altered. He did get away with posting a picture of himself on Facebook during his presidency that made his fingers longer, hands bigger and body 50 pounds lighter. So, for the sake of consistency, let's call fake photos what they are, fake or altered, and stop using the word Photoshop, indeed. And I said this when we first discussed the picture, the fake picture that Kensington Palace put out. It is setting a very dangerous, dangerous precedent that an institution like the British monarchy would put a fake photo out there in an age where artificial intelligence and manipulated images are being used in information warfare. One of the highest institutions in the United Kingdom doing that. Not acceptable. Anyway, um, William was out and about. And let me tell you one thing, kids, kids ain't gonna lie. Kids aren't going to lie. They're going to tell you what you what they feel. They're going to show you what they feel. And this young lad over here is doing just that. He's letting us all know <laughs> exactly how I feel <laughs> about William in this moment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, the kids really give us some of the best moments around William and Kate. Do you remember when Kate... Uh, went to one of those schools and one of the kids was like, what about Harry and Meghan? And Kate just rolled her eyes. Dear, oh dear. Somebody please give this young man an award. Can we please fundraise for um, his uni tuition fees? Whoever this uh, young man is, I think he deserves a prize. But yes, William was out and about doing appearances. Um, he went to a school or playing basketball. I don't know what that was about, but he is out and about. Kate is still not out and about, still has not been seen, heard from. And there was a rather interesting article in People where they're coming, even some of her staff have not been able to see her for some time. So, Kate Middleton's surgery remains in a shroud of secrecy, with many family members still in the dark. This is, was uh, an exclusive that was given to Us Weekly. It seems innocent enough. On Sunday, March the 10th, Kate Middleton shared a family photo on Instagram showing her seated in a car surrounded by her three smiling children. It was the first official photo of the princess to be released since her January procedure, and it appeared intended to reassure royal watchers who noted um, her absence, um, as well as the lack of communication from Kensington Palace about her health, that she was in fact on the mend. But within hours, social media was in a frenzy over the image. Uh, 
Uh, okay, let me just try and skip through this. The last things we already know. The next day, Kate addressed the controversy. The strange unfolding of events has only added to growing concerns. Um, according to one royal source, Kate is actually doing well, but has no intentions of sharing more about her condition to the public for now. Whatever the reason for the operation was, it's of a personal nature and Kate wants to keep details as private as possible. But I thought you, we pay, you pose. That's what the royal rota has been saying all this time, that you're actually not entitled to privacy. Double standard now. Adding that even some members of her own family are still in the dark. So members of her own family are still in the dark? Perhaps when she's feeling up to it, she may reveal more, but she's not making any promises. Um, a few of Kate's senior staffers haven't been able to see or speak to her, and they didn't even know about the surgery until it was announced, so it's caught them off guard. So William was apparently caught off guard about the, the surgery. Kate's staff was apparently caught off guard about the surgery. And apparently some of Kate's family don't even know fully what's going on with her. So who who is actually around this lady? Who's handling her? Because it, it kind of sounds like she's being handled. <clears throat> Only a few people know what's really going on and they're tight-lipped. A few people and whoever it was who leaked to the Spanish press. I don't know, guys. Whatever's going on with this um, is creepy, is scary, and mostly because we just know what this institution is like, the way they hide things, um, the way they lie. And according to Piss Morgan himself, some of the things that he's heard are so damaging. Right, let me go to the comments and then I'll go on to the next thing. Uh, Beverly, you said, um, and I think that she will also be showing off other people who are foodies, designers, and manufacturers. Absolutely. Megan's always giving a platform to other people. So that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, Marilyn, you said, I read that Megan has a Netflix cooking show, a cookbook. And a blog coming up. I don't know how true it is. This is what they were saying in the Daily Fail and the tabloids or what they're speculating. The, the fact is we don't actually know. And until it comes out officially for Megan's people, I won't believe it. Even with the Harry and Meghan Netflix documentary, until I um, actually saw it for myself, I didn't even believe that it was being shot. Um, Dolores, she said, the royal family is all about images. He who controls images controls everything. That is true. But the problem is, is that when when you create this idea of you being perfect, you have to uphold that idea. And the pressure to uphold that idea, it, it, it's, it's not anything that anybody should give themselves. And again, this is something that was being said in the spaces earlier today. They've propped Kate up to be this perfect Barbie doll. I think even herself, that's the image and the idea that she wanted um, to be seen as. And where we are in our culture now, I think we have come such a long way in just allowing people to be their authentic selves. And I think that's what ultimately makes Megan a lot more relatable. And she wasn't afraid to say that she was struggling with her mental health. She wasn't afraid to say that I'm not okay. She wasn't afraid to talk about her miscarriage. These are all things that normal, regular people go through. But the royal family have propped themselves up so much to this godly ideal that it's just not, you know, it's not anything that anybody can live up to. And it's not anything that anybody should have to live up to. We are human we are flesh we are blood we will go back to dust when we die so please do away with this this idea that you're anointed by god and and you're so you know perfect and above everybody else we are all flesh blood and bones and i think that they would gain so much more respect 
if they just came out and was honest about what has happened. You know, I don't know. Say Kate has does have an eating disorder. Say that she does have to have a stomach sack or whatever it is that, um, you know, is being speculated. And so what? There's nothing shameful about sickness. No, no one is going to shame you for being sick. And if they do, well, they're a horrible person. But you claiming that you're above and better than everybody else and that you're so perfect, trying to hide what's going on and playing in our faces like that, and then trying to make it out that we should give you sympathy and give you privacy when you didn't want to do that for the biracial duchess, don't play in our faces like that, please. And just for the record, if it, if it does come out that Kate really has something wrong with her health-wise, you're not going to hear me making fun of it. I think they should start to be more honest. It would help a lot of people. Right. Um, next thing. Victoria Newton. AKA, I like to call her the female Pierce Morgan. Current editor of The Sun. And walking demon, this lady who is wanted on charges of using phone hacked information to write stories. She also allowed Jeremy Clarkson to write his infamous column in her paper the day after he met with Camilla and Pierce Morgan for lunch. She was on a radio show playing in everyone's faces. And we're going to listen to the audio of what she said. Because I think it really shows you the mindset of these people and also how they are still very much in contact and in bed with the royals. And it, so this is the editor of The Sun, Dan Wooten's former boss. It's been written that the marriage must be in trouble because yeah. she took her wedding rings off. I mean, have you, you seen, you believe, you you've seen the size of that rock? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't, can't imagine she wears that ring most of the time at home, but I just thought that was really... By the way, when Meghan was having her ring refitted, they couldn't stop writing articles about why isn't Meghan wearing her ring? Where has her ring gone? ...unfair and it felt a bit bullying and that's why I thought we had to make a stand. Do you think that Kate's... Had she felt that it was bullying what's been going on with Kate for the last, what, two weeks? What Meghan has had to endure for seven years? Almost leading to her t taking her life. Kate's only had to endure for two weeks. Mind you, a lot of the talk and the speculation around this whole situation with Kate, it's not even necessarily directed at Kate. And I don't even think it's bullying Kate. It's because everybody knows what this institution is like. That's what the majority of the speculation has been another Princess of Wales being put through the ringer. I would not say that the majority of the chatter around this whole Kate situation has been bullying at all. The hard time, she deserves a break. I, I certainly do. Um, a couple of days ago, I ran a front page saying lay off Kate because it felt to me a bit like it was becoming bullying. Um, this is a woman... So you were happy to run a whole front cover saying lay off Kate? But you allow Jeremy Clarkson in your paper to say that he hates Meghan on a cellular level and that he wants her to be paraded through the streets naked and have excrements thrown at her. And that, that wasn't bullying to you. People pointing out the double standards between Meghan's treatment and Kate's treatment, people pointing out how rotten this institution is, that's bullying to you. And here you are coming to the rescue with the front cover on the Sun newspaper. Ridiculous. He's had a really, really serious operation, probably far more serious than anybody actually understands. She always said she would be out of the public life until um, Easter. Um, she isn't head of state. It's a bit different to say King Charles, who I think we had more right to know more about his illnesses and what went wrong. Um, but I think with Kate, she, she didn't deserve that. And what happened was these crazy online speculation, both here and in the US, went out of control. Um, and it seemed that the public were really, really desperate to know what was wrong with her. But I think she, she had a right to, to, to be at home and recuperate. Um, so that front page... Have, she's trying so hard not to say that she has a right to privacy. 
she's trying you can like you can hear the stuttering in her voice she sent quite a message um because i'd noticed up until that point the bbc were constantly leading with this i think for 24 hours on their website they were they were debating whether the trees had been altered in the picture for her mother's day one that she that she put out so look yes she made a mistake in doing those alterations to the picture but um i spoke to kensington palace that morning and said look how is she and they said she's really upset and sad that she's caused all this trouble all that she was trying to do is to put out a lovely picture for Mother's Day of her kids that she thought the public would enjoy. And you know what it's like. You've got three kids trying to get them to... You've got three kids, Stig, I think, haven't you? Got, trying to get them all to look the same way for a picture and smile's pretty difficult. Yeah. So I can see that. Um, and, of course, once she realised she'd made a mistake, she apologised. Was Megan ever allowed to make a mistake? Was Megan allowed to make a single mistake? There was nothing that Meghan could do that was good enough. Even raising hundreds of thousands for Grenfell. You had Camilla Tomini, friend of Prince Andrew, writing hit pieces, linking Meghan and the women of the, uh, the, the, the Grenfell kitchen as terrorists for writing a cookbook. Thing doesn't seem to strike me as matching very much, but in a world of conspiracy, and you know this, yeah. that the nut that I'm sure, as editor of The Sun, how many of people you know text you and say, What's really going on with Kate and William? Oh. What's the truth about it? it must Off be all the, the scale. And, and, and it does exist, doesn't it? This whole culture, and it's not necessarily just wackos no. in their basements. It's, uh, I include my wife in this. I know lots of people who just <laughs> genuinely are obsessed with that story. And so the Absolutely. worst thing they could have done was screw up a picture because once people yeah. believe in conspiracies, and something like that happens, it, it reinforces the conspiracy, whatever. And remember, these are the same people who said that Meghan was fueling the drug trade because she was eating avocados. But you want to fix your mouth to call us conspiracy theorists? Absolutely. That's why it was a terrible mistake that was made. Now, I think they made it innocently. I think um, she, well, William took the picture in, in, in good faith. Um, she wanted it to look good and sent it over without... See, she keeps saying William took the picture. William didn't take a picture because there was no picture taken. This is multiple pictures that were put together. So they're still trying to change the narrative. There is no original picture that they can give us. That's why they haven't given it to us. It's multiple pictures put together to make a fake picture, to paint a fake narrative. Realising that you couldn't really do that. Um, so it was a mistake. Should Kensington Palace's uh, press people have protected her from that? I mean, if, yes. if I were them, of course they should, but if I were them and I got sent a picture from the future king, I would assume it was, uh, it was fine. So I can see how mistakes were made. I mean, there was another sort of wider point I wanted to make, really, is that I've met William quite a few times now at various events and things, and I know... Oh, yeah, she's met William, and also, just before Charles became king, she also met him. The editor of The Sun, tabloid newspaper meeting with the royals. Sounds like conflict of interest to me. You know how deeply he feels about protecting that young family, and especially his wife and children. He had a difficult upbringing himself with a family that was disjointed, and, and he's determined to have a really, really private life for his own children. He's really close to them. They always make sure they're home for bath time, bedtime. She cooks most of the meals. I mean, it, it's very difficult. She, she sure does know a lot about what goes on in the Cambridge household. Is she literally at their house? Is she running the baths? I mean, how does this lady know so much? Different to the life he had growing up, and he's, that's why he's so fiercely protective. And the nonsense that's been written that the marriage must be in trouble because yeah. she took her wedding rings off. I mean, Yeah. I mean, what do you say to that? This is Victoria Newton. Hmm. All right. That's all I had to say. Um, sorry to end it on such a, a negative note, but we have to talk about the bad um, and the good. The good, the amazing, the wonderful, the I cannot wait to see what is coming is that Megan has launched her new brand, American Riviera Orchid. And uh, don't forget to go to the website, AmericanRiviera.com because you can sign up to uh, the newsletter. And I can't, yeah, I, I just can't wait. All right, I'm going to get through your comments and then uh, we will wrap this up. Can I say thank you to um, Alinda, 
um, for the coffee this morning. Much appreciated. Thank you. Oh, and also Lynn, Lynn for the 10 coffees yesterday. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Gertrude M um, for the PayPal as well. Thank you so much, Lynn. Very generous of you. All right. Um, Yeah, they, they literally shamed Megan for being suicidal. After they're the ones that caused her to feel like that in the first place. Hmm. Bridget, I don't know if the British public will accept not seeing Kate for nine months. Um... I mean, each day that goes past and they're not clear about what's going on, I think people are going to get more suspicious. Yeah, the audacity of that lady, for real. Uh, Jean, you said, and he saw what was on earlier and showed a picture of Kate with what looked like a healing black eye and scratches on her face taken a year ago. Oh, okay. I've, I've never seen that. Uh, I do watch Tisa Tells, but I haven't caught up with her recently, so I'll go and check out what that's about. Um, I do remember there was that incident where they said that she fell off a trampoline and she had, like, uh, her fingers were broken or something. I felt, I felt that it was quite interesting that they went out of their way to let us know that she fell off a trampoline. I mean, nobody was going to ask... <laughs> why she had uh, plasters or bandages on her hand. Yeah, Tisa Tells is amazing. Go check her out. Her and also, uh, is it Mur Murad Morali? Exactly. The public know that family and Toxic Rota are lying to Leah. And that's, that's really what this is, this is about. This institution and its dishonesty. Also, the Cup magazine um, was being ripped apart as they deserved. They decided to post um, an article and it was all about, oh my God, like, why is Megan launching this brand now while Kate is ill and Charles is ill? And it's like, she doesn't owe anyone to, to navigate her life around other people. And this is the same Cup that Megan actually gave an exclusive interview. So do you know what that tells me? They've probably been cut out since that time. And I didn't actually um, realize how shady that cut interview actually was. I remember a lot of um, squaddies pointing out when it happened, but I don't know. I, I don't like to think badly of people. And when I read the cut interview, I personally didn't see the shade initially. It's only when the variety interview came out and you compare the two, I was like, oh, the cut were really being shady. And now, with this new article that they've put out, and they are being ripped to shreds in the comment section, as they should. Uh, Bridget, you said, look at those eyes that Victoria has, cold, calculating and hard, and perhaps even a little fearful. Yeah, because I, th I think she still has a court case hanging over her head, or at least the, the Sun newspaper does. So... I'm I'm quite surprised that she's out here doing interviews. If I was in her position, I'd be staying quiet and hidden. All right, going to end things there. Thank you so much for showing up as always, everyone. Please enjoy the rest of your day. It is Friday, another weekend. And uh, yeah, we'll see how the story unfolds. And what we're going to get from Megan. Please make sure to sign up to the newsletter. All right. Uh, and I will put all the links and everything in the, or oh, actually, no, I have already put them on the community tab. So if you want to go sign up to the newsletter and you want the proper links and to the Instagram page, go to the community tab. All right. Good day, everyone. Ciao.
If you would keep me waiting, I would wait a lifetime. In tricky situations, I will be a lifeline. Nobody's meant to be fighting alone. That's why I'm taking you home. I never felt something like this before, no. Keep coming back for your time after time. Maybe I'm losing my mind, but I know I'll never leave you behind, no. Baby, I got you. When you feel like falling, I'll be there to prove. Yeah. That baby, I got you. No matter the distance, no matter the root. Yeah. Baby, I got you. Diamonds, thank you so much for tuning into the Duchess of Success podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and comment on the video to help the algorithm find us. It is my pleasure to bring you all of the royal tea, honey. And if you would like to donate to the channel, please check out the links in the description box. All of your donations help to keep the channel running. Thank you for your support, and remember, you don't need a crown to be royal, we are all queens. <laughs>